Imagine starting every morning with a freshly grilled lamb, a hint of flour mixed with oil and a splash of wine. Sounds like a sumptuous breakfast, doesn't it? Now let's delve into the book of Numbers, chapter 28, verses 1 through 8, where God commands the Israelites to make such daily offerings. The freshly grilled lamb signifies a burnt offering, an act of complete surrender to God, symbolizing the believer's devotion and commitment. It's not just about the lamb, but the act of offering, the act of giving up something valuable and cherished. Next, we come across the flour, a fine substance obtained by grinding. Here it symbolizes the crushing and refining of our character to become better versions of ourselves. It's an acknowledgement that we are a work in progress, constantly being refined in the mill of life. Then we have the oil, often used in biblical times for anointing, symbolizing the Holy Spirit. The oil in the offering signifies the presence and work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life, reminding us of the divine assistance we have in our spiritual journey. Finally, the splash of wine, a symbol of joy and celebration in many cultures. In this context, it signifies the joy of being in a relationship with God, the celebration of His presence, and the spiritual nourishment He provides. So when we look at these daily offerings, we see a comprehensive picture of a believer's spiritual journey. The lamb represents our commitment, the flower our refinement, the oil the divine assistance, and the wine the joy of this relationship. It's a daily journey. A daily commitment, a daily refinement, a daily joy. And remember, these offerings had to be made in the morning and at twilight, reminding us that our commitment to God is not a one-time act, but a constant, continual dedication from the break of dawn to the fall of night. So, the daily offerings weren't just about the physical act, but carried deep spiritual implications. Now, if you thought the daily offerings were elaborate, wait till you hear about the Sabbath and monthly offerings. Verses 9 to 15 of Numbers chapter 28 bring us to the special offerings required on the Sabbath and at the beginning of each month. These aren't just any ordinary days, mind you. The Sabbath, a day of rest and worship, and the start of a new month, a symbol of new beginnings, were both given additional importance in the Israelite community. Let's delve into the Sabbath first. This was a day set apart, hallowed if you will, on this day, Two lambs a year old without blemish, along with the prescribed grain offering and drink offering, were to be made in addition to the daily offerings. Double the offerings, double the sanctity, one might say. Now you might ask, why the additional offerings? Well, the Sabbath was a day to cease from work and to reflect on the goodness of God. The extra offerings served as a tangible reminder of the extra dedication and focus on God that was required on this day. Then we come to the first day of each month or the new moon. This was a time to celebrate new beginnings and anticipate what the new month would bring. On this day, the offerings included two young bulls, one ram, seven lambs a year old without blemish, along with their grain offerings and drink offerings. Also included was a male goat for a sin offering to make atonement. The new moon offerings were larger, representing the grandeur of new beginnings. The sin offering, on the other hand, was a reminder of the need for atonement and the importance of starting afresh in God's grace. These Sabbath and New Moon offerings were not just about following rituals. They were symbols of devotion, atonement and renewal. They were a way for the Israelites to show their commitment to God and their desire to start anew with each month. Clearly these offerings were not random but were designed with a purpose. And then there were the special feast days, times of joy, celebration, and yes, more offerings. As we delve into verses 16 through 31, we are introduced to the three major Jewish feasts and the offerings associated with them. Let's unravel the symbolism and significance of these offerings together. First, we have the Feast of Passover, which is mentioned in verse 16. This feast commemorates the liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage. The Passover offering, a lamb, is a poignant symbol of deliverance, as it was the blood of a lamb that saved the Israelites from the final plague in Egypt. Next, we encounter the Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, in verses 26 to 31. This feast celebrates the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Two loaves of bread baked from the first harvested wheat were offered as a wave offering. The bread symbolizes the provision of God, who sustains his people with the bounty of the earth. Lastly, in verses 16 to 25, we find the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as the Feast of Booths. This week-long celebration occurs after the harvest, where the Israelites lived in temporary dwellings to remember their 40 years in the wilderness. 
The offerings during this feast were numerous and varied, symbolizing the abundance of God's blessings and His guidance during their journey in the wilderness. These feasts were times of joy and celebration, yes, but they were also deeply spiritual occasions. The offerings were not mere rituals. They held profound symbolism, reminding the Israelites of their deliverance, provision and guidance from God. They served as tangible expressions of their gratitude, dependence and devotion to the Almighty. So, as we journey through these verses, we see a pattern of remembrance and celebration, of gratitude and dependence on a God who provides and delivers. We see a people who, through their offerings and feasts, are constantly reminded of their divine history and their covenant relationship with God. The feast offerings were not only about celebration, but also a reminder of God's deliverance and provision. Are you ready for the next chapter? Just click here to go straight to it.